Great bus and we are here on Portland State's campus waiting for the uh, streetcar so they're all connected and we're gonna take this up about four or five more blocks there it comes all right I believe this will take us close to where we're heading if not we might have to commute just a little bit but it's very helpful having this here. So yeah, this will take us, it says Lloyd via the Pearl. So I'm believing this will get us right where we wanna go, pretty darn close, if not right, right there. The old Portland streetcar. Oh, don't leave without me. Got to go up here a ways to get on it. Alright. It's nice that these all kind of intertwine and uh, get you to where you got to go. So we're going to head there now. So if you guys do come down here and drive the, or not drive the streetcar, but take the Portland streetcar, they put these little maps in here too as well. Makes it a little easier. So all you have to do is basically look for what stop you boarded and what stop you want off at. This gentleman right here just did. People out here are very helpful as well. So, yep, it makes it easy. Southwest Park, all right just got off the streetcar and we are headed to Powell's but I wanted to show you guys a couple of these murals here real quick this is a newer piece here talk about uh, celebrating Oregon um, new Oregon cultural trust license plate starting October 1st they want to know what people think and then they got this really cool mural over here as well but we're going to head over to Cross Burnside and uh, go over to Northwest and check out Powell's, the world's largest bookstore. Pretty cool. Let's uh, check out this mural here. I guess this is going to be maybe part of the new license plate. Artist Lisa Burns. And it says, how many symbols do you see? That's pretty cool. I see a ton of symbols. I also see Mount Hood. Nice. And then we've got this big one over here as well. Wow, it got nice out. I'm very happy about that. Yep, gotta love all the art down here. So we were down here oh, about two, three weeks ago. I was showing you guys some of the progression on some of the buildings 
and some of the changes. And uh, I just like to really document these as well, just in case. Here's Jake's Grill. Um, really, really nice uh, establishment. Um, they actually have two locations. This is kind of the, the uh, what is it, the Alder location. There's also one uh, a little bit farther in, closer to the Pearl. But here's that building I showed you guys about a week ago. They're still doing their thing. Big old skyscraper there. So coming along slowly but surely. And you gotta really watch because these people are crazy the way they drive down here. <laughs> but here you have it. This whole area has really changed uh, a lot just in the last five, six years. But yeah, I wanted to show you guys this old... Uh... I used to work really close by here so I saw this quite often. But I don't think I've had a chance to document this old Pepsi Cola relic here. Look at that. And then above it, there's like a couple more old ghost signs. So you just don't really see those anymore. Pretty darn cool. Looks like they're doing some work to these buildings along here as well. All along the bottom here. This one's been vacant for a long time. Yeah, there were some uh, businesses in here not too long ago. I'd say maybe five, ten years ago. And you can see up there the roof sections of the building. I'm not sure if what happened, but it looks like some of the brick is kind of coming through where the, the building is just kind of dilapidated. Over the years, a lot of these have seen better days. Where we're going is just right down here, right past Harvey Milk Street. And in fact, I wanted to show you guys something real quick. This place is abandoned, but this was my old coffee shop. I actually worked here for, oh, about four or five years. It's called the Black Rooster, right here at 424 Southwest 10th. And as you can see, there's nothing cooking today. I believe the place is been vacant ever since. I don't know if there's been any other, you know, businesses in here really. Oh, it looks like there has there has been. There's a signage there right there that says like, I think it says Cozy Bar. So maybe it did have somebody come in and take it over, but maybe not for very long. But that's how I saw that Pepsi sign all the, all the time was working here at this coffee shop. And where we just were was just about two blocks up. So this neighborhood's coming around, slowly but surely. All right, let's make our way to Powell's. All right, just walking down Burnside, and uh, we are just right on the opposite side of Burnside. When we cross over, we will be right here to the world's biggest bookstore, and that's Powell's, Powell's Books. A ton of locations around Portland, but this right here is the biggest one, and uh, a lot of folks come from all over just to come here. Um, so a lot of folks will travel into Portland and get off at the train station or the bus stop just not too far from here and then go into Powell's just because it's enormous. They've got this giant uh, art piece here as well called Pod, which we actually did a whole vlog on. It's just kind of like a weird, keep Portland weird art piece. <laughs> but we're going to go inside Powell's because there's a certain cartoonist book if not comic or both that I want to check out and it's kind of a spoiler alert to a future vlog that we're going to be doing so stay tuned we're going to go right in here the world's largest bookstore and uh, oh yeah this is cool here's a uh, sizzle pie this pizza place was uh, actually Rocco's Pizza for many years right here but sizzle pie is now kind of taken over what Rocco's did but I definitely remember Rocco's Pizza many of nights coming down here after shows at the uh, McMinimums and whatnot. And this would have been right about here. I found an old-timey picture of Rocco's. I'll enter it here. But we're going to go right in here to Powell's. And check it out. 
and they do uh, a lot of folks that have uh, books published and different authors will come by here as well and have their book previews which they will kind of showcase on the main signage here uh, but the artist that we're going to go look for right now is an uh, artist by the name of Shannon Wheeler, a Portland cartoonist. And uh, he recently had his work hanging at the Portland Art uh, Center. We're going to go in here and check out some of his work and just kind of check out the place in general. Alright, so this place is enormous. This is just like the main lobby. And uh, we're gonna look for Shannon's work. So we're gonna chime back in here in one second. Just because I wanna be, you know, cautious to other folks and stuff. So I just wanna kinda show you guys the general layout and we're gonna go and figure out where his section is because there is a ton, but it looks like the info's right here. So we're in good luck. Right up in the gold room. In the gold room, awesome. So if you guys come down here, you can check in with the info desk as well. The place is enormous, so they probably have a map. <laughs> <laughs> but they were kind enough to write down where it was. So all I have to do is look for the gold room, aisle 315. All right, let's do it. So I was right, they actually have a store map. Um, but they make it pretty easy. It's all like color coordinated and stuff. But that was cool to get this actually. Here is a whole bunch of different sections. But if you guys look at there, they've got it color coordinated like they were telling me. And it looks like the gold room is off to the left. So uh, let's go in here and check it out. Gold room. Okay. And just an awesome layout here. They make it really easy when you first walk in. They've got the info desk and all the folks. And it was really nice getting the map as well because I could see how you could easily get lost in here checking everything out. Um, but yeah, just a ton of ton of stuff. Not just books. It looks like they've got all kinds of games and all kinds of stuff. So look at that, you guys, this is too funny. So his section is the gold room and it's right next to the coffee room. So how good is that? <laughs> Plus it smells like coffee in here. I'm guessing there's probably like a little, uh, you know, barista coffee shop up here. And then check this out. You can actually get some of their merch as well. They've got all their different shirts and stuff and sweatshirts. Ooh, I really like this one on the end. That's cool. So yeah, they've got all their here is available as well. Here's kind of the classic one that I kind of see a lot of with the organ symbol as well. Oh, and they got some hats too. Those are nice. Heck yeah. And some merch, all kinds of different little stickers. Ooh, look at this one's cool. And then one with Mount Hood there. So yeah, that's awesome. And I'm smelling some good coffee, so his book must be close. <laughs> I got some cups as well. I like these little. <laughs> There's a classic Portland right there. It's like the little cloud following you around. All right, so we are in the gold room here. And uh, it was too funny. I was just talking with some folks from Washington. I was like, this is kind of like maybe once or twice that I've been in here. Um, but we are going to look for. Let's see here. Section 315. So if you come in, all you have to do is go up to the info center and they'll dial you in as to what, not only section, but they've got it all color coordinated. So it is pretty darn big in here, but as you can see, uh, they've got it well labeled and sectioned so that you don't, you know, really get too lost. Getting lost is kind of a good thing though. You might find somebody that you haven't read before. <laughs> this is cool too. They've got all these the color of signatures. Just a ton of autographs of folks that have visited. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Shannon's autograph or a little cartoon on here. Some cool history on here. <laughs> That's so cool. I like how they put that kind of plastic over it too, so it keeps it good. I can't believe I beat you this time. <laughs> That's so funny. Somebody signed it 1895. <laughs> That's classic. 
got these little end sections as well. And I like what they label them as. <laughs> Okay, so we are in Fantasy and Horror 308 and 309. Looks like we're gonna have to go down a couple more here. But that's okay. Cause you find things like this when you're just kinda looking through. I really wish they'd bring back Weird Magazine. That always re his work inspired, you know, inspired them and stuff. And I always love ancient Lovecraft, especially at Halloween time. So cool. Yeah, this place is incredible. Okay, so here is 313. All right, so it should be here, 314. And I'm seeing a whole bunch of comics, which is a good sign and some newer artists that I haven't seen before. Yeah, I always like different cartoony. <laughs> okay, so we are looking for 315 and then obviously his last name. So, I'm guessing it should be close here. This looks like anime, so this definitely proves how many times I've been in in the last <laughs> 10 years or so. Pardon me, bud, sorry. Okay, so I'm guessing we're close here. All right, again, very grateful to the folks here because I was in totally the wrong section. <laughs> Well, it's kind of close, but uh, here we go. We got a ton of his work here, and it looks like uh, we've got. All right, so we've got three different copies, but here is the one that I called on. I was going to have him put it away, but I was like, I'll just make my way down here. And like I said, this is kind of a spoiler as to what we're going to be doing soon, so you're definitely going to want to stay tuned, um, but I'm excited to get this. You guys are going to want to stay tuned. Like I said, I'm not going to give away too much as to what's happening, but uh, this may kind of speak for itself. But let's go purchase it. So like I was saying, I'm so excited to find this, and I found it so ironic that uh, his aisle is literally like a foot or two away from the coffee room here. <laughs> so pretty funny. Might have to go in and get me some coffee too. Uh, but yeah, excited to find this. And didn't have to go too far. The coffee shop in here is looking pretty darn good. So not just books, but actual little uh, collectibles as well. We'll get, we got Bell Lugosi bobblehead here. <laughs> nice. And uh, a ton of merch. So if you guys come down here and you want some uh, kind of unique gear or Portland-esque items, this would be the spot. They've even got like, you know, Funko Pops and board games. And uh, all kinds of goodies. This reminds me of the old Nicktoons. <laughs> but yeah, just a really cool bookstore all around. And I have to give them good customer service props. Because I would have been here all day looking for that. <laughs> so thanks again to the good folks here at Powell's. Alright, just paid and got our book. And uh, yeah, great folks here. I highly recommend stopping in and checking them out. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys the uh, opposite side of Burnside here because they are doing a lot of construction. Um, but yeah, Pal's Books, largest bookstore in Portland. I think it's the largest bookstore in maybe Oregon, maybe the world, I don't know. You guys be the judge, you'll have to come down here and get lost. You know it's big when they've got a map. <laughs> So that's going to do it for um, Pals, and I appreciate you guys always tuning in and creeping with. And, uh, yep, found what we were looking for, and I'm excited for future vlogs. And uh, thanks again to the good folks here at Pals for dialing me in. That's going to do it from downtown Portland. I love you guys.
Thanks for always tuning in and creeping with. It means a lot to me. You guys can ring that bell. That way when I creep, you guys will be the first to creep. Until next time, creep her out for now. Peace.